Hello, Joe Neville here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about IPv6, RA Guard, and pretending to be a hacker. Where's your mask? I don't have a mask. <sighs> you gotta have a mask. I don't have one. All hackers wear the hacker mask. At least put a black hoodie on. IPv6, RA Guard, and pretending to be a hacker. How was that? Rubbish. RA Guard then, so what is it? Well, we can't talk about RA Guard without knowing what is an RA and why is it important. So RA stands for Root Advertisement, and this is one of the real key aspects of V6. So for people that don't know anything about V6, I'd say the most important things to know are the 128-bit address space, Slack allows clients to generate their own globally routable addresses, and three, I'd say the importance of a router advertisement. So you're probably more familiar with IPv4. And if you think about IPv4 world, we have DHCPv4. And that's where we allocate the addresses from a centralized server. We can allocate addresses, but not just the address, we can allocate in really important information such as the DNS server and the default gateway. Now in v6 world, we have DHCP v6 for allocating addresses, but we don't need it. Okay, so what we have is Slack and Slack allows clients, like I said, to generate their own addresses. How do they do that? Well, this is where the RA comes in. The local gateway sends these packets onto the local link containing the network ID. So that's the first 64 bits. The clients receive these and they take the network prefix and they generate their own host ID, which is 64 bits, add those together, you get a globally routable address. Okay, so that's your address allocation. But also, so those other options that I talked about with the DHCP v4, so your default gateway, your name server, that information in v6 world can come from the RA, that can be included in the RA. So the RA sent by the local gateway contains the network ID, it contains the default gateway, and it also, if you're implementing RFC 8106, it can contain the IP address of the name server and the search list. So really important for clients and all client OSs are listening for these RAs. And that's a really important point. So even if you haven't implemented uh, IPv6 and why haven't you, your Windows or Mac OS or your phone, you know, Android or iOS, they are listening out for these RAs. And because of the important information and the fact that the clients are listening for these RAs, they're really like the keys to the kingdom. So, you know, they're a bit of a soft spot in the network and that means that it, uh, nefarious hackers might want to send some rogue RAs on the network. So what they could do is they could plug into the network somehow, start generating some RAs which contained the wrong network ID or the wrong gateway, advertising themselves as uh, a gateway, so creating a, you know, a man in the middle attack or a denial of service, these kind of things. So we need to make sure that RA is secure. Now in other areas of IT, we might do that with certificates. So creating a kind of, you know, a public key infrastructure, a PKI, so that we had some kind of way of validating the authenticity of the RAs. We don't have that implemented in IPv6. I won't go into the details any further, but I'll just say we don't have that framework in place today. So what we need is some way to secure our network from these rogue RAs that are possible. Because it is, and I'll show you in this video, it is pretty easy to generate rogue RAs. There's software freely available which allows you with minimal IT, you know, if you're a real script kiddie, you could definitely set this stuff up. Now RA Guard is a feature that we configure on our layer two switches and it goes some way to protecting our network from rogue RAs. Let's jump into some slides because it'll be easier to show you with a diagram. Here's my network to explain RA Guard. Now RA Guard is configured on 
an L2 device, not the L3. So this is my L2 device here. It's an Aruba AOS CX 6300. This is my L3 gateway. That's also a 6300, but it can be any L3 device which is capable of sending an RA because that's all it has to do. It doesn't have to have the functionality for RA guard on the L3. It's the L2 device, the layer 2 device that we configure this on. This is all configured as a single L2 domain then it's VLAN 777 and I have my target host connected to this this is going to going to be my Mac and we also introduce a rogue gateway in this case it's going to be a Linux server onto which I install the tools that allow you to craft an RA but the thing is and what I haven't mentioned so far actually is that this problem could be apparent just through misconfiguration. It doesn't have to be some case of malfeasance on the network. It could be that you just have an L3 device completely innocently misconfigured that's sending the wrong RAs onto the network and causing a problem. But in our case, I'm actually going to craft some pretty interesting packets to cause problems down on, well, attempt to cause problems down on the uh, target host. So we've got two gateways, one good, one bad. And what happens is without RA guard on our L2 device here, the good gateway will send its RA that will go through the L2 switch and be received by our target host. But also the rogue gateway will be able to send its RA and that will also be switched by the layer 2 device. Now if we turn RA guard on for our L2 device, what we have is, we, so we turn it on globally, and then we have to designate trusted and untrusted ports. Now that term trusted and untrusted could be a bit misleading, um, because it's not like that everything on this port is untrusted, it's just the RAs are untrusted. We don't trust any RA that's received on this port, we only trust the RAs that are received on this port here on the left because we know that that's physically connected to our good gateway over here. Now what happens is that when the good gateway sends its RA that's allowed through to our target host but when the row gateway sends its RA and it's received on the untrusted port it gets blocked. All good then so all we have to do is work out which ports on our layer 2 device connect off to the good gateways, set those as trusted. All the other ports can be untrusted. We turn on RA guard. If an RA is received on the untrusted ports, it will be dropped. Job done. Well, not quite. The weakest point for any armor is the moving part between the plates. Bear with me on this one. It's the moving parts between the plates. That's where you can attack an IPv6 has some pretty significant moving parts. Now with an IPv4 packet, we have a variable length header. So we have things like the source and destination in the header. And then if you need to include additional options, those are included in the header as well. And it can be a variable length. But with IPv6, we have a fixed length header of 40 bytes. If we need to include additional information, we can include that in what's called an extension header. We have them for things like hop by hop. So uh, that can be examined by the devices as it moves through the network. We have ones for routing uh, to indicate whether there's fragmentation, uh, destination options. So information for the destination device. These are headers that are added between the fixed length header and the rest of the packet. Now, one of the things with this is that it's pretty loose, the rules about the ordering. There is suggested ordering, but uh, the rules are pretty loose about the ordering of the extension headers. And there's no upper limit to the amount of extension headers that can be chained together. So that's what I'm talking about, about the um, moving parts. And this chaining together of extension headers can cause a problem for the networking devices implementing RA guard. That's been found to be an attack vector. So extension headers and also fragmentation. Fragmentation is a bit of a problem in V4 world as well. It's also a problem with IPv6. So there's a lot of work done 
quite a few years ago now about this. So this is well known. I'll bring up the information because there's a lot written about this. There's RFCs dedicated to it that found that there were ways to circumvent RA guard. This is where the hackers come in, okay? Okay, so on screen, I've got RFC 7113. This is an informational RFC by the V6 community's biggest Diego Maradona fan, Mr. Gaunt here. It's implementation advice for V6 RA guard, okay? Because attack vectors were identified. When's this? February 2014, okay? So a few years ago. If I scroll down here, it's got details about the attack vector based on extension headers. And what it says here is that some RA guard implementations were trying to identify the RA. So on the untrusted port, they were trying to find out that an RA was received just by looking at the next header field. So not going into the chain where you've got the extension headers. So what attackers were able to do is add extension headers in front of the RA. So inject these in to try to smuggle the RA through. So this is pretty basic stuff, but the, the problem was that the network device was not looking deep enough into the chain. So you had the header, the extension headers, and then you put the RA behind those, and that would be able to smuggle it in. Going forward, so that's one attack. And the other attack is fragmentation. So fragmentation, what, what the attacker does is essentially, it's, again, it's trying to smuggle through the RA, but by creating multiple fragments and then placing the RA information in one of the latter fragments. So fragmentation happens in, only on the source device in IPv6, not the intermediate devices. That's just something to remember. So what we do with this attack is we have, and you can see the diagram here, so you have the original packet, you have a long header with the RA at the end of it, and then when that goes through and is fragmented, you have the first fragment doesn't have the RA in it. So the RA is pushed into a latter fragment, trying again to smuggle that through. Okay, so those were ways that were found to circumvent RA guard a few years ago. So when I found out that um, AOSCX had an implementation of RA Guard, I thought, well, I should test this out to make sure that we're not hitting these problems that are mentioned in this RFC. So how to test this? How do we create these attack, pa these crafted packets to do this attack? Well, actually, it's pretty easy. And I got some help from online. So I mentioned that I was doing some work with RA guard and on Twitter uh, a friendly Twitter user sent me some information so let, let me show you that here's the tweet then well it's two tweets uh, from Eno Ray and well, so thank you very much for these um, and it's a couple of links one's a white paper and one is a link to a blog site and it includes essentially a test schedule against RA guard. So using a Python program called Chiron, I hope I've got that right, um, and uh, setting this up so that we can craft packets to fire at RA guard and then recording what's got through, if anything. And you can see here that it's pretty... It's pretty comprehensive stuff, this. I mean, there's how many? We've got 18 tests there to go through, and it gives the commands to send them. So I thought, well, why not? That That's an obvious place to start for the testing and to show off what the Aruba AOSCX RA guard can do. Let's uh, put it through its paces. Now that we've discussed additional details, let's update the network diagram. The rogue gateway is going to be an Ubuntu server that's 2004. It's running Chiron, of course. The good gateway is going to be an Aruba AOSCX 6300. We already know that the layer two switch is going to be an Aruba AOSCX 6300 as well. And the target host is going to be my Mac. I'll check the terminal to see what IP addresses we have on my Mac, but I'll also be running Wireshark so we can actually see what packets are coming in from the 6300, and I'll be running Wireshark on the Ubuntu server to see what packets Chiron is generating. Here's the addressing. The trusted RA will send 
a prefix of 2001 DB8 777 slash 64 and the untrusted RAs off of the road gateway will be in the range 2001 DB8 BAD and I'll increment that if we see anything coming through just so that I can line that up with the test schedule. Let's have a look at the configuration on the devices then. So starting with the good gateway. This is the layer three interface. You can see I've got the 2001 DB8 777 colon colon one slash 64. I've dropped the minimum and the maximum interval for the RA so we're not waiting for the default and I've done the no suppress so we are going to be sending the RAs. That's all we need to do on the good gateway that will start sending the RAs. You don't have to set the A flag or anything that's on by default and over on the right here I have my link into my other AOS CX 6300 which is acting as the layer 2 switch and it's on here that we need to configure RA guard. Now we have AOS CX RA guard is a subset of a bigger command which is ND snooping so in most cases you just turn on ND snooping and you would benefit from RA guard plus extras but for the purposes of this video I'm just going to concentrate on standalone RA guard and so there's three steps that we need to do first of all we need to turn on ND snooping globally then we need to go into the VLAN turn on ND snooping and turn off the components that we don't need and finally, we have to think about our port. So once you turn on ND snooping, all of the ports are untrusted. So we'll be dropping RAs and the good ones. We have to go to the port that connects off to our good trusted gateways and designate them as trusted for ND snooping. OK, so it's three parts. It's global, VLAN level and port level. I'll show you that. So to start with. I'll show you ND snooping. ND snooping is disabled by default. Oh, and I should mention, of course, that we are running on both of these 6300s, we are running 10.05. So ND snooping disabled to start with, global level, we're going to comp, we go ND snooping, and there you go, enable. Now we go into the VLAN that we want to turn this on. So if you've got multiple VLANs, you would turn it on for multiple. I'm just doing it on VLAN 777. Notice that this is the layer two artifact. So VLAN, not interface VLAN. I made that mistake a few times. Um, if you do ND snooping there, you've got a question mark. So we can turn it on here. And if I come out of there and do a show ND snooping, you'll see that ND snooping is now enabled. Uh, for 777, we've got ND guard, which we're not focusing on in this video, plus RA guard. So to turn off ND guard, I will need to go into my VLAN and go no ND snooping. And then you've got the ND guard there. It's no enable, is it? No, right, send that. Okay, and we'll do this show ND snooping again. You can see that we're now missing ND guard on 777. But if I scroll down, you can see that all the ports are not trusted. So nothing's trusted there. Those aren't ordered, which I know has been raised to get this sorted out. Now, um, we're concentrating on port 114 there. So that's not trusted. I need to go into that port. So it's interface. 1124 and I go ND snooping and you've got the command there trust there's no command for untrust you would just know this ND snooping command if you wanted to take it off right so enter that come out of there and now 1 slash 1 slash 24 is trusted Let's have a look at some of those other commands. Show ND snooping because there's some extras there. Uh, we are interested, so we, we can go VLAN specific actually. Yeah, so that can that shows you the specific details for the VLAN. 
Ah, just before we move off of the configuration, there's one last step. And that is that I've set the good gateways link local address to an easily recognizable address. So the way that I've done that is interface VLAN 777 and it's this IPv6 address link dash local. I've set it to FE80777. The reason for that is that during the testing on the target host, we'll be sniffing the traffic and we still want to be receiving the good RAs and hopefully not receiving any of the bad RAs. So I needed an easy way to differentiate between the two sources rather than having just the standard link local addresses. I thought setting this on the good gateway was the perfect way to differentiate at a glance. OK, so let's jump over to the rogue gateway. That is my Ubuntu server. Here's my Ubuntu server. At the top, I've got an SSH session into the server where I'll be running the Chiron commands. At the bottom, we have Wireshark running. So this is a remote desktop into the server and I'm showing you Wireshark with quite a strict filter on there so we can just focus on the traffic that we need. And this is the source. So we, we will see the rogue RA. So the, the bad RAs will be shown in this window. Let's run you through Chiron. It's a Python program, and essentially what you do, it's a suite of different programs, actually. We are running Chiron local link, and the parameters are that I need to set the source interface, the type of traffic that we want to send. So this is an RA. I've set the prefix, and I've set the source to the link local address. If I run that, you get some friendly messages and as you can see we've got a router advertisement here come in so there we are so it's icmp v6 ra and the type is 134 if you look at the prefix actually and the flags that are set you can see that the a flag is set there so it's a slash 64 where the a flag set modern operating systems will all generate their own address if they receive this okay but that's pretty basic. Now the power of Chiron is that you can really craft these packets. And if you think back to those attack vectors that were identified in the RFC, there were extension headers, there was fragmentation, and there was a combo of both. And you can do all of that with Chiron. So let's do something a bit more interesting. All we have to do is essentially use the same basic command and then add different flags. Now this one, the, this flag here will add an extension header. You just have to have to put the number in. So destination options is 60. If we add this in, we will add an extension header to the packet. Let's send that then. Off we go. So we've got another one here. Let's have a look at that. I'll close that up first. Okay, so in the V6 header, what you see you have the next header with destination options and then you've got the destination options there. I think it's just padding really. And then after that, we have the RA. So it's the same RA as we were sending before, but now with an extension header. Okay, and you can easily chain those together. Oh, let's close that again. You can chain those together by adding a comma, let's up arrow, comma 60. I think this should work. There we go. Okay, so we've got a third one there. Uh, yeah, close that. Now we've got two destination option headers. So that's how you can chain them together with quite a basic command in Chiron. Okay, now let's have a look. What was the other one? So fragmentation. So we can add number of fragments. Remember the space, so we'll add two. And what we should have is a couple of fragments. Yeah, so we get a fragment and then we get the RA. The first packet, we have the next header is fragment header, and then the next one, we have the actual RA in the second fragment there. And you can up the number of fragments quite easily. You can set, let's send four, so you got three fragments there and then finally you've got the RA at the end so you've got the four fragments and then the combinations so we can combine those 
command was that okay that one and then we just add number of fragments let's make this quite a big one we'll go four okay so we got the four fragments and the RA at the end now the thing with this is that there's two different options here this one has the headers before the fragment header so that command where is it this LU capital E that has the headers before the fragment header you can also do it so you if you add in F they will come afterwards so they won't be in the first fragment okay if I send that there we go right so if I look at the first fragment yeah we don't have our extension headers in the first fragment they're not in the first one they're not in the second or the third you only see them in the fourth fragment this is pretty roguish behavior on the network and this is the kind of thing that early versions of RA guard were found to be susceptible to they would pass packets that's Chiron that's our rogue environment if you remember the link that I mentioned where there was a test schedule what I've done is that I copied that out and I put that those are the different combinations so what you can see is that each one of the tests we we'll start off with test one which is just simple so there's no flags I've already shown you a basic command like that to send an RA. Then we've got fragmentation, so that's number of fragments, two and four. Then we're adding extension headers, and then you can see that those are combined. And we also are looking at where the extension headers will be before the fragment header. So they'll be in the first fragment. And this these tail end tests here, where it starts getting very interesting, the extension headers will be after the fragmentation header so pretty heavy stuff now I also thought that that would be quite boring to uh, type all of that in manually so I put together a simple bash script to run through each one of those tests I've got that here which go so most of it is formatting I've just put the commands from the test schedule into so you can see the different uh, options there and what I've also done is that the prefix that we're sending is linked to the test number. Okay, good stuff. So if I, uh, let's reset this. I'll just continue without saving. I'll run that and you can see that it will go through and it will generate lots of different RAs. So this being the source, of course, still. You can see there's fragmentation, there's ones with extension headers with fragments and the combination of the two quite slow but it you know it's much quicker than entering it manually that's finished so rather than going through all of them let's look at the final one which is probably the most challenging and what it has is multiple fragments so it's four fragments but the extension headers are all pushed back behind the fragment header so there's no extension headers in the first three only in the final so we've got the four fragment headers and then you've actually got four extension headers in there as well so you've got destination options routing header destination options routing header and then finally we've got the RA so that's quite a challenging one that's test 18 as you can see down the bottom there okay so what I need to do then is go onto my Mac so my target host here's my Mac then this is the target host what I need to do is from here fire off the Chiron script and then I jump onto this Wireshark so that we can have a look now uh, we shouldn't be alarmed by seeing these RAs the green ones I've set those green for good obviously so um, you can see that those are, have got the prefix of 777 so these are the ones I want to see I want to see green what I don't want to see I think I've set it to red the highlights on red so maybe not a great choice but uh, it'll be obvious which one comes in because we've got the different source addresses okay so let us go back over to the Ubuntu I will run this test again there so that's running and over here we're watching to see so fragments will get through we'll see multiple fragments coming through from there but the RAs should not come through if 
I hop back over, let's see how we're doing with the testing. So we're on test nine. We can see that the traffic is being generated up to test 11, test 12 hop back over so no RAs coming from we've got fragments but we don't have RAs how are we doing so we're on 15 16 17 and the final one 18 the most challenging of the schedule let's hop back over fingers crossed okay there we are I knew that was going to happen of course so there's no <laughs> RAs from uh, I'll stop the capture actually as you can see from this, there are no RAs that have managed to get through the RA guard. We see the fragments, but we don't have the RAs. So that's a pretty positive result, I think. You can also see this if I show you the config of my target host. Bring that across, and you can see there that we've only got addresses in the good prefix 2001 db8 777 none in the bad prefix just to finish off to prove that this was uh working let's go over to the layer 2 switch and we'll do a no nd snooping uh enable there we are okay show nd snooping that is disabled all this back run those tests again let's start the capture okay it like i said red bad rays coming through so the rogue rays are able to get through without nd snooping let's come off of here do an if config and seven you'll see there so various addresses have been generated because the rogue rays have been able to get through to the target host that was ra guard on aruba aos cx so we covered a lot in this video talking about ra talking about ra guard and those methods that were found in the past to be able to circumvent some implementations of RA guards, such as chaining extension headers together and fragmentation. Had a look at that Python program, Chiron, which allows you to craft your own RAs. And we ran through that 18 test schedule. And I'm pretty pleased to say that CX did not let through, of that testing schedule, did not let through any of the rogue RAs while still allowing the good RAs through. So I chalked that up as a win. And I think that just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching. Please do like, comment, subscribe, all of those things. It really does mean a lot to us when you do. But now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some hacking to do. Still rubbish. <laughs>